Hello students, in this video we'll discuss the metric tensor in orthogonal curved linear coordinates. Let's be given orthogonal curved linear coordinates which are u, v, and w, right? And then we can construct these unit vectors, right? Construct the vectors, partial r, partial u, these vector fields of position, partial r, partial u, partial r, partial v, and partial r, partial w. These vectors are all mutually perpendicular, right? And they're all scaled by some numbers h1, h2, and h3, where those numbers are the Lamé coefficients, right? So h1, h2, and h3 are these Lamé coefficients. And then the i, j, and k are mutually perpendicular. So i, j, and k are mutually perpendicular. Like that, excellent. And so now of course what these things correspond to is these correspond to a covariant basis. So in our sort of our parlance of our covariant contravariant thing, I'm gonna call this thing over here E1. This is gonna be my E2. And this is gonna be my E3, right? And what we have now is we have actually these our vectors over here form an E1, E2, and E3 unbarred over here, right? So this is going to be my, my basis over here, E1, E2, and then E3, right? And so now we know what the metric tensor is going to be, right? So we recall, so recall, that our GIJ, our metric tensor, GIJ, is equal to what? is equal to ei dot ej, where I have a covariant basis over here, right? So for this case, for orthogonal curve linear coordinates, I'm gonna get a three by three, i and j go from one to three, right? And so now notice, of course, that these things, since these are mutually perpendicular, that gij is just gonna re reduce to an identity matrix, uh, a, a diagonal matrix over here, right? So in other words, this is going to be equal to what? This is gonna be equal to ei is gonna be equal to just hi, hi squared, just the length of these things squared over here, right? If i is equal to j, and it's gonna be equal to zero if i is not equal to j, okay? So what this tells me is that I'm gonna get a matrix over here, I'm gonna so let g be this gram matrix, and this gram matrix is gonna be h1 squared, zero, 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 h2 squared, zero, 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 h3, squared, and the important feature about orthogonal curve linear coordinates is that this gram matrix is going to be a diagonal matrix, right? So this is already diagonalized, so it's a diagonal matrix. Which makes all of our calculations much easier in orthogonal curve linear coordinates, okay? Excellent, and so let's see some examples of this, okay? The classical examples we want to consider to find the metric tensor of these things, let's do them, uh, we can do a sort of a smaller case, but we should, might as well just do the whole spherical coordinate case, right? So let's do an example. So if we look at spherical coordinates, our spherical coordinates are rho, and then phi, and then theta, and how are they defined? They're defined by, these are spherical coordinates. Okay, defined by what? Defined by x is equal to rho, and then a cosine of phi, and then a sine of theta. y is equal to rho, sine, phi, sine, theta, and then z is equal to rho, cosine theta over here. And so now with these spherical coordinates, what we're gonna do is we're going to actually do the, this, these vector fields, right? So let's find partial r, partial rho. So partial r, partial rho is gonna be this vector y. It's gonna be cosine of phi sine of theta, and then sine of phi sine of theta, and then cosine of phi, and this happens to be a unit vector over here, so this dr d rho is really gonna be my e rho hat over there, right? And so the h1 or the h rho, h rho is just gonna be equal to one over here, so my Lamé coefficient corresponding to rho is gonna be equal to one. Let's do partial rho, partial, I'm gonna do partial rho, partial r, 
partial, let's do phi, partial r partial phi is going to be what? Is going to be a rho sine phi with a negative sign, sine theta, and then a rho cosine phi, and then sine theta, and then a zero like that, because there's no phi dependence on this thing. So this is going to be my what? This is going to be my vector e rho, like so. And of course, what's the length of this vector? This is going to be my e rho. And this implies that the Lamé coefficient h phi is going to be what? My h phi is going to be the length of this thing, which is this thing squared plus this thing squared. That's going to be a rho squared. And then a sine squared theta squared root. So it's going to be a rho sine of theta, like that. And then finally, what's my dr? What's my dr? dr d phi, d rho, d theta rather, that's going to be a rho cosine of phi cosine of theta, a rho sine of phi, then a cosine of theta, then a minus rho sine of theta. And from this we can we can easily see that the Lemaitre coefficient h theta is going to be what? This thing squared plus this thing squared plus this thing squared square rooted, right? So I'm going to get a rho squared out of everything, right? And then I'm going to have a what? Co a cosine squared phi plus sine squared phi. That's going to be equal to 1. So it's going to be a cosine squared plus sine squared. So this is just going to be, give me a rho over here. So I have h phi is equal to rho. So we get now is we get our gram matrix in these, um, in these spherical coordinates. So hence, the gram matrix in spherical coordinates is going to be g which is going to be 1 for each row, 1, 0, 0. Then a 0, then of course I put in the next Lemay coefficient over here. The next Lemay coefficient is rho sine phi. That's going to be a rho sine phi 0, and then a 0, 0 rho. Other textbooks might uh, index this differently, but this is going to be our gram matrix where, of course, the 1 corresponds to the rho. It's going to be a rho variable. That's going to be a phi variable over here. That's going to be a theta variable over here, right? So we get our gram matrix for this thing. And now the important things are, are to remember about these gram matrices is that this, this is, in some sense, like a metric um, is a metric matrix over here, and this allows me to compute a metric tensor, right? So I can, from this, we can always extract the metric tensor G. A lot, this is going to be a my... GIJ allows us to compute DS squared, which is GIJ DXI DXJ, like that, that metric tensor over there. And so, of course, what would this be? So, in other words, in spherical coordinates, what's my arc length over here? It's going to be a 1 D rho squared plus rho squared sine squared theta D phi squared plus rho squared, and then a d theta squared. So this is my arc length elements in polar coordinates. So we're going to see that this differential, this ds squared, is really going to be, in some sense, just a different form of tensor. But what I'm doing over here is this is allowing me to actually compute this scalar quantity over here since I'm summing over i and summing over j. And I'm able to actually compute lengths from this expression over here and solve variational problems in terms of finding geodesic formulas. So in further videos, we're going to exploit this structure, this metric structure over here, to be able to compute lengths and geodesic and find geodesics using a variational principle or Lagrange. But it all boils down to this very basic structure of this metric tensor over here, being able to compute dot products between two vectors in orthogonal curvilinear coordinates. Thank you very much.